Okay, so let's actually get down to the specific tree ordinals that we really are going to need for to create um, good fast growing and slow growing functions that eventually show that they um, they kind of collapse together. Um, so we'll call instead of omega n, each class is going to be called T n, um, and it's it's pretty simple based on what we just had. Our starting ingredients for for T n at, at the at level n, we're going to allow ourselves zero and one. Um, and omega naught, omega one, up through omega n minus one. So all the omegas and good old zero and one that make sense in this level uh, that would exist in omega n, for example. Okay. So we start with those guys, and now we ab ab apply phi sub n, the appropriate phi at this level, um, with any alpha um, that's in T n plus one. So the alpha has to be generated in this way as well. Um, applied to beta, that has to be in the TN, and then iterated, if necessary, delta times, and that has to be TN. So we're just going to build this out, very much like the omegas get built, built out, but it's much more special that we only allow ourselves omegas as ingredients, and of course, your own one, and then the phi functions are our one and only way of creating um, new things. And we can just repeat that any finite number of times. Okay, and we'll see a bunch of examples of what those look like in practice. Okay, so it's the smallest class of tree ordinals in omega n um, that includes these given starting elements and is closed under transfinitely iterated applications of phi n. Okay, so we'll see how that works. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so I do want to, one of the things here is it can seem a little disconnected from the rest of the stuff we've been talking about for the last like 35 videos um, if we don't have a little bit more com more careful way to compare to ordinary ordinals. Um, in other words, essentially throw away the explicit fundamental sequence data. Um, and that's pretty easy to do. So we'll, we'll define what's called the ordinal height of one of these tree ordinals. Let me uh, italicize that. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to use absolute value bars for that. Okay, and so obviously, ooh, this should be zero. Obviously, the height of the tree ordinal zero is just zero because it doesn't have any fundamental sequence data to throw away anyway. If I know the height of some tree ordinal beta, then the height of its successor is just the ordinary ordinal successor of that guy, as you, you'd think. And then the third definition is pretty much exactly what we'd be forced to do, which is if I have a beta that we think of as created by a certain kind of fundamental sequence, and we tend to want to remember that data, all we do is we look at the heights of all the things in that sequence, the values of beta. Those are ordinary ordinals, and we just take the soup, the supremum, the limit, whatever you want to call it, of those guys in the ordinary ordinal sense. Okay. Um, so once again, of course, that could take a lot of unraveling if you have some complicated thing that's based on fundamental sequences and its its values, uh, all the terms in its fundamental sequence have fundamental sequences themselves, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. But this is a completely good inductive definition of this absolute value or this ordinal height operation. There's a nice little one-line equivalent that um, Wiener, I guess, Schwichtenberg and Wiener use in a different article, which is um, just look at all of the tree ordinals less than the beta you're interested in. And that means things that are predecessors or things that are fundamental sequences of what you're looking at or fundamental sequences of fundamental sequences, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And just take the all of those things plus one and take the soup of all those guys. It's kind of a cute one-line definition. But this, I think this is a little clearer in terms of the three steps. Starting ingredient, successor operation, limit operation. Okay. Um, it's understood, as I said in the previous video, it's really important that any value of a function beta is less than the whole function beta itself. Um, and that's because the way we like to think of beta is it's the limit of this quote fundamental sequence that consists of the values of beta leading up to beta itself. Okay. Just like, for example, omega naught is the limit of all the integers, which are the actual outputs of omega naught thought of as a function. Okay, so I'm going to be using that. Uh, that notation, and I'm going to make some claims about that uh, that I'm not going to prove, but the main thing is that it behaves in really nice ways. Um, and for example, the definitions of like adding tree ordinals or multiplying tree ordinals or exponentiating tree ordinals, when you put the absolute value bars around them, it just reduces to 
uh, what you, the usual definitions of those operations on ordinary ordinals. Okay, so there's some theorems there that or lemmas there that I'm not going to prove, but I will show you some examples at least. Okay, so <clears throat> um, and I'll be a little explicit to start with. So let's just let's just do these ones in TN, um, not just completely bizarre unstructured tree ordinals. Okay, so let's see phi one of one beta. Remember what that was? Even before we had the the explicit definition, it was pretty clear what that was. That was doubling. Okay, um, if we run it really explicitly. If you want one beta, when beta is a limit ordinal, that's going to be a limit ordinal itself. And the kth element of a fundamental sequence, this is all happening in omega 1, so they actually have ordinary fundamental sequences, is just beta plus the kth element of uh, the fundamental sequence for beta. So if you want to unpack it that much, you can. Okay. Um, pretty easy to show that the ordinary ordinal height of the doubled tree ordinal is just the ordinary double of. Um, of the, the height of beta, just like I was saying, these operations uh, go through pretty well, okay? So for example, the kind of thing we're gonna be doing, the kind of thing that's in T1 is start with our best friend omega naught and then do phi one of one, that's a comma omega naught, that's totally legal to stay in these this class of um, special ordinal, tree ordinals T. The size of that guy is just the double of the size of omega naught and that's just the double of good old fashioned omega. Our, our best friend, the smallest infinite ordinal. Okay, so similarly, um, we know that <clears throat> when you take beta and you do phi one with control argument two, that says double beta, beta times, or in other words, beta times two to the beta. Um, and if we want to be careful, and you know, to make these things really, really work precisely, we do have to be careful. That means that if beta is a limit ordinal, the kth element of that sucker. Uh, of the fundamental sequence for that sucker, uh, or in other words, thinking of this as a function on integers, on positive integers, is take beta and then take two to the integer beta of k. Ooh, well, actually, to the whatever beta of k. It could be, again, a limit ordinal, and then you have to unpack that again and unpack that again, as usual. Okay. Um, so this is this is important to make everything work out with equalities, is that this is not what we would have guessed necessarily as to how we would approach this if we weren't focusing on relentlessly using the fast growing hierarchy to create um, our fundamental sequences. And the ordinal height itself, it doesn't really care. It just sees the two to the beta k and is like, oh, that's just some increasing sequence. So what? I don't care using powers of two. Okay. So for example, if you do this to omega naught, which is the typical thing that we're going to do, okay, um, and just look at the ordinal height of that guy. Okay, so we're writing it very carefully as omega naught times two to the omega naught, and then we take the ordinal height of that sucker. Well, it's not hard to show that that's just omega times two to the omega as an ordinary ordinal. But you know what? And this is where this is the ex precise expression of the, this um, idea I just said that it, the ordinary ordinals don't care about the powers of two. Two to the omega is just exactly the same as omega as an ordinary ordinal. So this is really just an, an overly, somebody from ordinary ordinal land would say, this is a really overly complicated way to say omega squared, okay? Um, but that's because they've thrown away the very precise fundamental sequence information that is implicit in this description with the two of the omega naught, okay? Um, so I made a claim before, and this is where I stopped and said, hey, you know, you're not going to believe this unless I, I'm able to make it a little more precise. Um, phi one of three comma omega naught. This is a certain tree ordinal, and now I can make more precise what I said about it being on the epsilon naught level. In fact, I claim that the ordinary ordinal height of this is exactly epsilon naught. Okay, so let me justify that a little, a little better. So what's the definition of phi one of three comma omega naught? It's you're going to start iterating the two version of phi one um, an infinite number of times. So let's start iterating it just a few times to get a sense of that. Okay, so let's start iterating it twice. We know what it, what it is to do it once. That's what we were just talking about. And then if we do it again, we're going to take that omega naught times 2 to the omega naught times 2 to exactly that, omega naught times 2 to the omega naught again. And then at the at final, we're going to take the ordinary ordinal height of that. Okay, so again, not proving it, but all those operations pass through and become ordinary 
ordinal operations um, when you take the height. And so this is just omega squared times 2 to the omega squared. Okay. But this is where we get to play our usual fun games with, ordinary, with ordinal arithmetic, kinds of things that take a while to get used to. Um, <clears throat> this is 2 to the omega times omega. Or in other words, one of the things that is true is the a to the b to the c law for uh, ordinal exponentiation. That's 2 to the omega, then to the omega. Okay, now 2 to the omega really is just omega for ordinary ordinals. So this is omega to the omega. We still have the omega squared sitting out here. Another one of the laws that's totally true is the addition law. So that's omega to the 2 plus omega. And then the 2 plus gets, gets um, that just disappears. And so this is just a, a very fancy way of saying omega to the omega. Um, again, what we really have as a tree ordinal is a rather intricate way of describing a fundamental sequence for that kind of ordinal involving lots of powers of two in a very particular pattern. But the ordin, uh, the usual ordinal notation for it is just omega to the omega. Okay. All right. So now next we're going to iterate it one more time. So we're going to take the, the two control argument version of phi one and we're going to apply it one more time to what we had. Okay. Well, so, and then we're going to take the ordinal height. And I claim it's just taking omega to the omega times 2 to the omega to the omega. We get to play another standard trick here. I'm going to add a 1 to the omega, which doesn't change that as a usual ordinal. That allows me to spit out an omega here. That allows me to change the 2 to the omega to an omega. And then when you combine them together, the omega to the omega here really doesn't do anything. And you get omega to the omega to the omega. OK. Um, so now we see the pattern pretty clearly that when we iterate this over and over and over and over again, and in fact, when we look at the limit, so now when we iterate it omega naught times, that's just going to be the, the limit of iterating it any finite number of times, which is this guy, okay? And what we've just seen is that in terms of the ordinary ordinal height, um, that's just the soup of a bunch of towers, exponential towers of omega, and guess what? That's the definition of epsilon naught. Okay. So as long as you believe me that, that these operations mesh together with the ordinal height operation, then that's uh, hopefully that's uh, a pretty clear justification that this really is something that's at that level. But once again, this object as a tree ordinal, we can think of as epsilon naught with a very particular choice of a hierarchy of kind of nested fundamental sequences at every stage that are all based on doubling and therefore on powers of two and therefore on like iterated powers of two stuff that is going to make the the um the identifications for example between f and g work out really well but stuff that we don't always absolutely have to pay attention to if we just talk about how big is this okay um and that's what i say here so there's a lot more structure um than just plain epsilon naught but that's cool so, so we're getting a handle, hopefully we're getting a handle on at least the simplest values of the phi1 function uh, applied to the simplest infinite tree ordinal. That might seem like only a tiny little bit of what we need to understand, but it actually um, is pretty important to, to see how this works and to get a sense of what these functions are doing. Really important is the analogy between phi1 and phi zero, remember phi zero or phi naught is exactly the fast growing hierarchy. And that applies, that takes an integer as an argument and produced another actual integer. That's our main goal is ridiculous huge numbers. But this just exactly emulates what that was doing, but just with a, an infinite argument or an ordin ordinary, a, um, a tree ordinal argument. That's because it's using the same definition. It's based on successor, iteration, and diagonalization and in exactly the same way as the, the fast growing hierarchy is, is doing. So that's, that's a really, really important thing, is that it's really just based on the same idea as the fast growing hierarchy. Okay, next, our, next one, I'm gonna go a little bit more into the details of how this works when we get a little bit more intricate.